Yeah, so I'm Games Manager here in County Loud, um, have been this last two years. I was GDA for probably nine years before I stepped up to the role as Games Manager, so I'm not I'm around the place for 11 or 12 years, so I'm kind of, there's, I kind of know a lot of the club people around the county, so I think I've kind of a good relationship with a lot of clubs, and I think that's something today, obviously, um, it's something we've thought about, and we were going to, going to do it over the last couple of years, and then with COVID came in, so I felt it was an opportunity when cool camps quieten down a wee bit to go into and uh, to run an inclusion camp with two other uh, mainstream camps on this week as well. Yeah, so we can we advertised between myself and Trina uh, with the Loud Sports Partnership. We met up and um, just had a discussion about how we might take this forward, um, and we decided that we were going to go for a three-day camp, a uh, coup camp. Uh, we were going to brand it as the coup camp because. A lot of the parents, I think, felt that the kids, a lot of kids, were missing out on the whole brand of the Kellogg's Cool Camps, and it has got such a big brand. And um, we, every club in County Loud, had run a camp, so we 39 camps, but there was 40 clubs involved in the 39 camps. Um, so it was excellent to have and to be able to offer the kids with um, special needs an, an opportunity to to take part, to get the gear, um, and learn some new skills, and to feel part of a group is the main thing. Like, um, and obviously. Um, it, it was a lot quieter, as I said, with the camps that on this week. Um, we felt that we could take some of our stronger coaches in and help us out with the camp today, as, along with our staff members. Yeah, so just the, the session. So we probably half the coaches we had out there are staff members, so they probably would have a lot of experience from going into schools, doing primary school, uh, going in coaching Gaelic football and hurling in primary school. So they have a lot of experience. Um, like that, I would have spoke to some of them and they said, like it's great to have teachers that are able to give you a heads up, um, and we expect we the parents this morning were obviously had filled in a form um, in the last couple of weeks, and myself and Trina went through them, and we seen the special needs that some ca kids had, and we also had we knew what to expect. We had a registration morning here on Saturday morning, and we got Mickey Hart, who's loud current uh, senior football manager, um, ex Tyrone manager. Met, like one of the faces of the GA in the last 20 years came up presented the kits to the kids here on the Saturday morning and parents grandparents and everyone were up getting pictures taken with their kids in front of the building in front of the loud crest and the whole feel good factor about that up on social media um, the phone was hopping Saturday evening after I went out on, online because we knew that um, and we accepted kids. Yes, the registration was closed but we still accepted um, kids onto the camp it, like obviously we weren't going to let a child sit at home knowing that there was a camp on up the road and because sometimes they might have missed it um, through their clubs or whatever, they may not have been involved in clubs so they might have missed that advertisement. So like that, it's just involving everyone, giving everyone the opportunity to take part in the, in the Kellogg School Camps brand and um, I think building on it for next year, um, we might go get out to the clubs and offer it a bit more to the clubs that are especially the inclusive clubs. Obviously, it's the fear probably and I know myself when I was GDA going into schools and we would have done maybe six week blocks in, in uh, schools with special needs and it's probably a fear factor that you might say something wrong or you might make a mistake and you might um, f make a child feel bad or whatever so it's a fear of not not feeling bad and just let's get on with it um, and like obviously parents know children know that you're there for the, for the well-being of the child and um, you're trying to help them it might be improving their physical skills, but you're definitely helping them, helping them overall as a person. So I think that's the main thing. It's the fear of not being afraid to get stuck in. As I said to the coaches there this morning, who would have less experience, just down your whole um, your ego this morning and just kind of go with it and enjoy it and act nearly like a child for the two hours and just get them involved. If, they want it, if kids want to kick the ball off a cone, if kids want to score goals, if kids want to pr practice bouncing the ball, if kids want to play with cones on their own, just sit down and be one-to-one -one and help them um, just develop themselves. Yeah, as I said, um, it's obviously it's great. Um, Roach Emmons was the first one to start up. Um, Olivia um, set it up then there and, and in conjunction with um, our inclusion officer here on your hockey. So, and on the bat of that, there's four other clubs or three other clubs with that. So we've four clubs now that are involved in, in inclusive GA, um, and we'd love to see that. I think Anya mentioned that there's another four clubs that have shown an interest. Like obviously, we're not going to set a target that it's going to be every club. It's I think that we're not. Whatever clubs, some some clubs the facilities suit it. Some other clubs may not. So we just have to like to see if there was eight this time next year. It'd be unbelievable if there's another one or two to join in. That we're not going to put a figure on it, but it, I think definitely I think 
going forward, I think these camps definitely even during the summer we might hopefully bring the camps maybe out to the clubs maybe a wee bit more. We can see here in Dover yeah, it's excellent facilities, probably too big. Um, it's the only issue with AstroTurf um, that obviously kids, or some might take off running and you may have to, there's a big area and we think that some of the clubs that have set up, the most of them have small AstroTurfs and it definitely is very helpful to have in an in a enclosed space. So going forward, I'd love to, I'm not going to put a figure on it because um, and obviously with COVID times we can't we had a hall booked as backup if the restrictions had lifted obviously that didn't happen so we kind of had to adjust to the weather today and hopefully um, the weather will be good for the next two days like even in our camps I think there's six out of the 22 or three that was here today that went through the mainstream camps as well so they had the kits coming and we knew what to expect a lot of the coaches that worked here today worked with them and even off the bat of that like we know if we go as GDAs or games manager out to primary schools to do coaching and um, that a lot of these kids are in mainstream schools and it's involving the SNAs and involving the teachers in their session plans that it's not just um, making the child stand to the side because they can't do a solo involve the SNA with them even if they're practicing catching the ball or bouncing the ball on their own that that's that the child doesn't feel um, excluded from the session that you're including teachers the SNAs and everyone into the session